If you go outside and look around you, what do you see? Plants? Animals? You probably don't think a lot about the wildlife around you, but it might not belong there. Welcome to Revelation Science, I'm your host, and today we'll be looking at Ireland's invasive squirrel problem. Firstly, we should answer the question, what is a native species? A native species is considered as a species that is indigenous to a specific geographical location, such as a country or island. This means they are meant to be in a specific place due to their traits and what environment best suits them. Examples of native species include the red squirrel in Ireland and the grey squirrel in the USA. The red squirrel has been in Ireland since the last ice age, but the grey squirrel, who is indigenous to the US, has been in Ireland since 1911, when 12 grey squirrels were released in County Longford in the west of the country and bred together to make the sizable population of grey squirrels seen nationwide in Ireland today. Although the grey squirrel is native to the US, it is considered invasive in Ireland because they aren't originally from the country. Grey squirrels are widely credited with the decline in population of the red squirrel. This is because they carry a disease called squirrel parapox virus, which does not appear to affect their health, but often kills red squirrels. And along with this, grey squirrels eat acorns, usually before they are fully ripe, decimating the food source before the reds get to them. This is a pretty serious problem for the reds, and they risk becoming extinct if something is not done about this. Luckily for them, us humans have a solution for the problem we brought upon them. The native pine marten of Ireland is a natural predator of the red squirrel, but the pine marten won't turn their nose up to a tasty grey squirrel either. Because red squirrels are native to Ireland, they have learned pretty well that the pine marten is not one to mess with, and they stay away when they can. But the grey squirrels aren't as lucky when it comes to knowing that the pine martens mean trouble and they don't keep their distance. Both squirrels can smell the pine marten, but only the red squirrel recognises that the smell means trouble. Because of this, it is thought that introducing more pine martens into the wild might bring down the population of the grey squirrels, while leaving the red squirrel population to thrive in their absence. But what happens if we can't save the red squirrels? Well, the truth is, we don't know. The immediate consequences may not be visible, but the long-term consequences may be devastating. We can see examples of long-term devastating effects due to a species going extinct in places such as Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, USA. Wolves have lived in Yellowstone for thousands of years, but in the 1920s they went completely extinct there. This left a gap in the food chain as there was no longer a natural predator for the local deer and they began to increase in numbers. These deer were able to change the course of rivers in Yellowstone as they would overgraze the surrounding areas, causing lots of erosion on the riverbank. The absence of plant roots holding the soil together makes the banks weaker and more susceptible to erosion. This devastated the local ecosystem with floods and mass loss of river habitat. It was clear, something had to be done. The decision to reintroduce wolves from Alberta, Canada was made in 1995 and because of this the number of deer reduced, soil strengthened due to increased plant roots holding it together and river erosion slowed down protecting the habitat from further harm. Stories like this make it clear how important conservation of the squirrels may be, as the consequences could be devastating, but in the end, the future looks positive for the humble red squirrel. Thanks so much for watching, and if you've learned something new, be sure to show some support. This has been Revelation Science, and I hope you've had a great day.